everyone, welcome to the Oaklerds YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're gonna be making the Purse Pal from Lynn's Handmade. This little cutie patootie is such a fun scrap buster. Now the sizes of the panels are not terribly small, but they're also not very big. This is going to be fast, it's going to be simple. You can make it as elaborate as you want, or again, as easy and quick as you want. So let me just run you through the pattern real quick. On the front, we have this little snap tab here. That's just to hold down all your credit cards. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, six credit card slots. On the side here, you have a slip pocket that is big enough to fit money. And then on the top, you have a little zip pocket. You can put your coins in there. This sucker is so cute. We have raw edges along the sides, but I don't know if you can see. I use that beautiful edge coat on the sides and it looks so good. Like it looks like one just thick piece of leather that has a bunch of slots in it. I love that. So we're gonna go through all of that today. So we are in the beginning of summer 2021. I've decided that this summer I am going to be making up for the summer of 2020. So all my crafts this summer are going to be quick. I need quick, fun projects. I still wanna get in my craft room. I still wanna get behind the sewing machine as much as possible, but I'm gonna probably be traveling a lot. I'm gonna be outside a lot. I'm gonna be around people a lot. So I don't wanna be spending days and days and days working on a project. So this summer is gonna be all about quick and fun, easy crafts. And this is just such a good one to kind of kick it off with. So as a lot of you probably know, I will be spending quite a bit of time at Disney World this summer. So this is just the perfect little addition for a slim bag. I don't need to carry all the credit cards and all of the different, you know, game coupons and medical cards. I don't need to carry everything when I'm at the parks. You know, I wanna still have it, but I don't need it on me all the time. So this is a great small little wallet that I can just slip into a slim bag, go, don't have to carry a bunch of stuff. I love that. So in today's tutorial, we will be going through this entire wallet. It is very quick, it is very fun. The Probably the hardest part and the most time consuming part is cutting out these panels. You really only have like two exterior panels. Um, I messed that up two times. Now you can see I have one failed attempt here and another failed attempt here. So that's the hardest part is cutting it out. Now, Lynn's is awesome because she did provide you with SVG files. So whatever type of cutting device you have, Brother Scan and Cut, Cricut, Silhouette, you can just pop that into your computer, put your vinyl, whatever material you're using on your mat and the machine will cut it out for you. So for today's tutorial, I did have the machine cut out the material for me to avoid mistakes. However, I did cut out a second version of this so that I can show you how to cut it out using a little X-Acto knife. So for those of you who don't have a cutting machine, I didn't use a cutting machine for this first one here. It still turned out perfect. I just messed it up a few times before I got it right. Other than that, it comes together super fast. We are gonna be going over edge coat at the end. I did already put about three layers of edge coat on this one. I really, really like that. I don't think we're gonna have time to go through a full three layers on today's make, but I do wanna get you started on it so you kind of understand how to use it. If you choose to, you definitely don't have to add edge coat to the sides of this. It's still gonna look great. The one thing for this though is for the exterior, you do wanna use vinyl or cork, anything that has okay exposed non-fraying edges. You don't wanna use quilt cotton for the exterior of this today. You can use it for the lining for the most part. Again, you could run into some fraying. So we'll talk about that as we go through the video. So if you're new to the Oka Roots YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all you wanna say, just leave them down below. I will have timestamps for every step of this. Like I said, we're gonna kinda mix it up just a little bit to show you a couple different variations. So I'll have timestamps for those down in the description of this video. They'll also be running along the bottom of the video. Thank you so much to Lynn's Handmade for allowing me to use your patterns in today's tutorial. I am so excited about this one. I know everybody, I mean not everybody, but many people have already made this. It's a very quick, easy one. I honestly just wanted to make a whole bunch of them, so of course I'm gonna film a tutorial for it as well. All right, let's get started. All right, to get started, you're gonna need about a 30 yard of cork or vinyl, some sort of nice, thicker, heavy material that doesn't fray. So I've got this beautiful vinyl from Backstitch. This is a thicker vinyl. This is the vinyl I used on my first version. It is much, much thinner than this. So you don't have to use a really thick material. You just wanna make sure that it's sturdy enough because we will fold it so you'll have plenty of, plenty of, you know, construction to this, but it has to be able to have raw edges. We can't use quilt cotton or cotton woven, cotton like, or nothing like that here today. No uh, canvas material either. So for the lining, you can use quilt cotton, but you will have some raw edges inside that could fray over time and cause a problem. 
So the only place you're gonna find that is in the card slot pocket lining. So see right here, this bright green fabric, that's the lining for our card slot pockets. The very edges inside are kept raw. So again, over time, I mean, I don't think it'll be a problem. I, I You're not like touching it, so I don't think the fraying will eventually, you know, come into the card slot area, but just something to think about. So for today, I'm actually using pull fabric. Now we use pull fabric all the time for items that are gonna be wet. I'm not worried about this getting wet, but pull fabric really doesn't fray. So that's what I'm gonna use today. It's nice and lightweight. I will use it for the zip pocket and also the card slots. So for the lining, you will need a piece that is at least 40 inches long. So when ordering your lining, I would get about a half a yard of lining and then you can use the rest for another project. I'm telling you, once you make one of these, you're probably gonna wanna make a bunch of them. So get enough material to make a few of these. So you're gonna need some zipper tape. Get it at least six inches or so. It's always better to be able to cut down your zipper rather than having, you know, a zipper that's too short. Okay, so here's everything else I'm gonna be using today. Let's just run through it. First, the sticky stuff. I've got 505 spray and also my Beacon 3-in-1 glue. I've also got a glue stick. Now this is a fabric glue stick. You don't need that. You can just use a regular Elmer's glue stick. A healthy supply of clips, as always. Also some double-sided tape. This Dritz quarter inch wash away double-sided tape is awesome for this. You're gonna be using a lot of it, so definitely grab some of this. For the snap, for the little closure, I have just these smaller snaps. These are from Cam Snaps, and then I have the dies that will go with my tabletop rivet press to set these. You don't need a tabletop press to do this. There are lots of little kits, but I have it, so I'm gonna use it. I have a lighter to help finish off some of the ends. I'll show you how to do that. For the edge coat, I'm using this Giardini. So this comes with a base coat and then your colors. So I actually got a kit that has a bunch of colors in it. I'll be using black today. To apply both the base coat and the color, I have this little Tandy leather tool. And then for marking items, I have a marker that will work on vinyl and a marker that will work on the back of fabric. A seam ripper and stiletto combo always. The needles I'm using today are Microtex 8012. On the bobbin thread, I have Mara 100. And on the top thread, I am using Tex 45. This is from Wizardry Stitchery, it's beautiful. It might be too thick for many domestic machines, but for my Bernina 770QE, it works fine. And then to help cut out all the details, I have this great little Fiskars cutting set here. So this is an X-Acto knife with lots of different blades. I love this thing, and I'm gonna show you how to use it on my little backup panel today. Okay, so here's everything cut out, ready to go for the wallet today. Like I said, there's not a lot to this. It's, it's fantastic. Again, I did use my Cricut Maker to cut these out for me. So I've got my exterior zipper pocket panel here. This has a little cut here for the zipper. I did go ahead and already add edge coat to this so that it's black because it was white. It's not the best job. I probably should have sanded it down, but it will be fine. Then I have my bag tag. This is what I'm just gonna sew onto the exterior of the wallet. Here we have our exterior slip pocket. This has a bunch of little cuts in it. And I'm gonna show you how to do this with the X-Acto knife in just a moment. So this has all the cuts on it for the card slots. One thing I wanna make sure you note, these are different sizes, okay? So don't accidentally use this one for both panels. It's not, make sure you use the right pattern pieces if you're cutting this out by hand. I did, I made that mistake, so you don't need to. Then you're gonna need two cuts for your snap closure. Now, if you're not having the machine cut this for you, you're cutting it yourself, I'm gonna show you that in just a moment. So you're not gonna actually cut these out using the pattern piece just yet, unless you're having your cutting machine do it for you. If you're doing it by hand, just make sure you have two rectangles that are bigger than this cut out. Next, we have the card slot lining. So this is just a nice long strip of fabric. We're just gonna fold it back and forth for our card slots. I have my zipper ready to go, and then I have my lining cut of fabric, and I did this by hand. I did not use the machine to cut this one, and then we just have to cut the slit for the zipper. Very easy. Like I said, prep time is the longest thing, and it doesn't take that long as if you do it right. Okay, so let's talk about the snap closure if you're not using a cutting machine. So you see I have two pieces of rectangle here using a different vinyl, and I've already glued them together. So I cut them out, and I glued them together using my Beacon 3-in-1, and I let that dry all the way. And now, once they're glued together really nicely, then I'm gonna use this and cut out my pattern pieces. This just makes sure that both of these are cut exactly the same. If you're using a cutting machine, they're gonna be cut exactly the same because it's a machine doing it. However, human error, we have a tendency to not be able to do something exactly the same each time, which is fine, but in this case, it's just easier if we cut them both at the exact same time, and then they'll be the same. So I'm just gonna lay my pattern piece 
over my two pieces of vinyl that are already glued together and I'm just gonna trace right around it. I'm using my vinyl pen. This is from Mormino. I love it. All right, there we go. So I have that traced out. Now I'm just gonna grab some vinyl or fabric scissors and I'm gonna carefully just cut right on that line. So there you go. Now you'd have one piece front and back that's both the exact same size and we can continue using this just like we're gonna use the other ones in just a moment. So that's prepping the snap closure. Now let's work on prepping the window for our zipper. So this little rectangle you would draw on the back is gonna be directly in the center of this exterior piece. I wanna show you, I measured it before, but I mismeasured and I ended up making it not in the center. It has to be in the center. It's kind of a big deal in this pattern. It has to be in the center. Now you could cut this out with scissors. However, the chance that you're gonna have some corners here that are not perfect are high if you cut it out with scissors. So an X-Acto knife here is great for this. I don't use an X-Acto knife a ton in bag making, but it is nice to have when you need it. So I just drew my rectangle on the back here. I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and I'm just gonna carefully just trace right along that edge of that inner rectangle. And this way I can go all the way down to that corner and see with scissors, I would have a tendency to go too far. And then what happens is you have a little corner here where one is cut deeper and it's, you know what I mean? It's like a little slit. But with an X-Acto knife, you can just go right to that center and then cut to the next corner exactly. All right, there you go. Make sure you always put your cover on your X-Acto knife because this look is a sharp. So see, now we have just that perfect rectangle right in the center. Very simple, very quick. Now let's work on the panel that has the credit card slots. So I just marked the dots on the back of this. So you can see here's the pattern piece and we have these little dots here. I just flipped this right side down so I'm working on the back of my vinyl. So it's just like that. And I just marked the dots for those credit card slots and also for the rivet. Now I'm going to grab my rivet press that has a hole punch here and I'm going to punch a hole on every single one of these dots, trying to center it as best I can. If you don't have a hole punch like this, there are ones with like a little hammer, you know, and a little awl you can kind of use. You can also skip this and just do the straight lines without the holes. So I'm just gonna go through and pop out all these holes. Okay, so all my holes have been punched and I'm just gonna kind of pop them out. Okay, so now you can see we have all those little holes punched out. And now what we can do is just go on the back, use a ruler and mark lines going from one dot all the way to the other. So they should all be a bunch of parallel lines. Do this for all six of your dot row combos. Okay, so you can definitely use a small rotary cutter here to go from dot to dot. Or you, again, you can just use your X-Acto knife I find that I actually have pretty good control over this X-Acto knife. So I'm just carefully tracing each one of these lines going from dot to dot. There we go. And there you go. Now your little slots are all ready to go. We do leave them raw. We don't edge coat these or anything. I mean, I, I guess if you really wanted to, you could. It would be very cool looking. But this is great. This looks professional. And that's how you would set this up if you were doing this by hand versus a cutting machine. So here are the panels I'm working with today in the tutorial. Like I said, my cutting machine cut these out. Now I got a lot of tips on Instagram on how to use my Cricut to cut this out. I have a Cricut maker and I was told to just use the regular blade that comes with it and just increase the pressure. So use like a vinyl, a thicker vinyl setting and that would be fine. I actually ended up using a knife blade for this because when I was looking at the Cricut settings, it said to use the knife blade with you know a heavier vinyl like this. It was okay. I will say it got a little jagged on one edge and I had to clean it up. Like this edge over here is still a little wonky. I'm gonna probably have to clean that up, but I'll, I'll clean up the edges later anyways. Uh, but it was okay. A lot of people who have Cricut Explorers said that they use the deep cutting blade and that works perfect with vinyl. So that's the advice I got. Also, make sure you lay your vinyl, vinyl side down and then reverse the image with whatever device you're using. So a lot of times this vinyl doesn't, but a lot of times vinyls will have like a fleecy fuzzy back. And if you put that on your sticky mat and then you lift it up, your mat is probably not gonna be usable anymore because it's gonna be covered in fuzz. So do it with the vinyl side down and cut from the back. So just make sure you reverse it. You guys know, if you have a machine like that, you probably know how to use it like that. 
but this was the first time I actually used my Cricut to cut vinyl for a bag or a wallet. So that, that was really cool and it definitely saved a ton of time because I didn't make all the mistakes. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna work on is the snap closure. Since I used the Cricut machine, I'm just going to put these together. I can definitely glue these together, but I'm just going to hold them together and grab some clips to keep them in place. There we go. If you cut this out by hand, then these are already glued together, ready to go. But I did not plan for that and I don't have time to watch glue dry. You know what, just for a little bit of extra help, I'm gonna use a super sticky tape and I'm gonna line it up right along the center. So this is a quarter inch tape. I'm gonna line it up right along the center on the back, making sure it doesn't cover that little rivet hole. And this way I won't sew on it, but it's going to help hold these two pieces in place since I didn't use my glue. Because I really don't want these shifting around when we're at the machine. Okay, so now we can take this to the sewing machine, whichever way you decided to make this strap. And we're going to top stitch along the sides and the bottom curve at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, there we go. Once it's top stitch, we can install the female end of the snap closure. So the smooth side, the cap, that's gonna go on the top of the strap. And then the female part of the closure is gonna go here on the bottom. Now, I forgot to show this, but this is the other set of the dies. So when you have a snap closure like this, there's gonna be four dies, two sets. So you have a set for the female end and then a set for the male end. This is the set for the female end. It has a cap holder on the bottom. And then this part here will go into the female portion on the top. So we just put the cap on the exterior part, put the female portion on the bottom, make sure it's all lined up nicely, put it in upside down, and then give it a good press. And there we go, now our little snap closure is ready to go. You could definitely edge coat this now if you'd like. Um, I'm gonna save it for the very end, but while you're working on the rest of this, you could just edge coat this and it probably won't be dry by the time you get to it because this is so fast, but if you wanted to, you could do that. Okay, so now let's work on the lining. Now you could definitely use an X-Acto knife here to cut this as well. I am going to just use scissors. So the template gives you the lining cuts that go right down the middle right here. So I'm just gonna grab a seam ripper to get started on the middle of this line, just to make a small hole carefully. And then I'll use scissors to continue cutting along the straight line and then cutting off towards the edges. All right, once you have that middle slit cut and those little V's on the end, you can flip this so you're looking at the wrong side of it. This is where you can grab your glue stick. And what I do is just one side at a time. So I'm just gonna glue right along the long edge on the top here and move right on that edge, just like that. And then I'm gonna take it and flip it back so it's about a quarter of an inch. You can get a ruler here and measure this if you'd like. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom long edge, just gluing along the edge and then folding it back on the wrong side. There we go. And depending on your material, it should hold pretty well. Add more glue if you need to. All right, now I'm just gonna do the short edges right here. And if it helps, do this over a cutting mat because you want this little pocket right here to be half of an inch tall. So that the height right here should be half of an inch. So if you do this over a cutting mat and you can see your grid lines, that helps you when you're folding this to make sure you don't overfold. All right, there you go. Now your lining is all ready to go. You can set that to the side. Now let's install this zipper. So grab your exterior zipper pocket, lay it right side up. Grab your zipper, and if you have a directional print, the zipper should be going towards the top when closed. So just like this, the zipper pull goes up towards the top when it's closed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna flip over this exterior panel, grab some of our double-sided tape, and lay it right along the edge on the back of our exterior panel of that little rectangle window. So I'm just gonna do the top and bottom long edges. You could also do the short edges if you like. That's what the pattern suggests. It's probably gonna make it easier. But I don't have much of this tape left and I'm gonna need it for later in the pattern. So I'm trying to save it where I can. All right, there we go. So now I'm gonna take my zipper, lay it right side up, and then grab my unit. Make sure all the direction is good. There we go. And you can see my zipper is quite a bit longer than the panel. I like that because that way if I mess it up, uh, it might be okay. So I'm just gonna take the paper off the top edge here, 
and I'm going to just tape down that top edge, trying to keep the zipper as straight as possible. Here we go. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. I'm gonna flip this up, remove the paper from the bottom, flip it back down, and then just press down that edge. There we go. So now I have my zipper nice and centered on my exterior panel. It's already looking so cool, isn't it? I love this. Okay, so she suggests adding your bag tag here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna add it right about there. So I'm just gonna eyeball this. I'm gonna top stitch it on at the sewing machine. Okay, so now I have my bag tag top stitched on. So now it's just time to combine this all together and we're actually gonna glue it, which is kind of funny. So you're gonna flip your exterior panel right side down, wrong side up. And what we wanna do is we wanna take our lining so that it's wrong side to the wrong side of the exterior. And you can see the lining is smaller, so we don't really want the lining to be in the seam in the end. So it's supposed to be like that. And we're just gonna center it over and glue it down. So for this, I'm gonna use some of my 505 spray. So I'm just gonna flip this over and spray on the wrong side of my lining fabric. I got it on my table, didn't I? Oh yeah, making a mess. That's okay, we'll clean it up. And then I'm gonna take this and lay it wrong side down, centered over my zipper, Ooh. and just try to get it as centered as possible before it, before it glues itself too quickly. Make sure those edges that you glued down for the zipper opening, make sure those are staying in place. There you go. It might take a little finagling, but you can do it. All right, there we go. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's not gonna be very noticeable. It's just the pocket. All right, there we go. We got that glued in place. That's good. So now with the vinyl right side up, we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along the zipper opening right here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Your top stitching should catch the exterior and the lining. So make sure everything is fairly close to that zipper. We want it to all catch in our top stitching. Okay, so I want you to see this. When I went around this originally, I didn't catch the lining on this edge right here by my tag. The lining didn't get caught. So what I did was I just pulled up the lining a little bit, moved it back down to cover the stitching that didn't get the lining. And then I just went over that edge one more time. Now, it's a little noticeable, but not a ton really. I just went right over the exact same stitches as best as I could. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all the threads to the lining side. So for example, I did it down here already. But here is one of my bobbin threads. And the trick to this is making sure you keep your top and bobbin threads nice and long at the machine. I didn't do any back stitching at all. So all my threads are nice and long. This is my bobbin thread right here. The top thread is over here on the front of the wallet. So I'm just gonna gently pull on this thread. And what happens is it pulls that top thread up just a tiny bit so I can kind of see it. And then I grab my stiletto to get in that little loop of the top thread and just pull it to the back like that. So now I have my bobbin thread and my top thread both on the back here. I'm gonna do that with this other side as well. I have to do this on both sides because like I said, I just top stitched a second time right along this one edge. Here we go. So now all of my threads, top and bobbin, are all on the lining side here. So all I'm gonna do is just grab the little partners, tie them in a knot, at least two times, sometimes three if I feel like it needs it. There we go, and tie them nice and tight so that they're close to the fabric. There we go. And then trim them pretty close. There, so do this for all of them. You don't need to trim right at the knot. Just trim, you know, so that it's an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch of thread hanging off from that knot, because then we're gonna burn it. There we go. Let me do this for the other ones as well. You should only have two sets you have to work with, but since I, I made a mistake. Okay, so now whichever spots you knotted and you have these like little straggly threads hanging off, you can grab a lighter and very gently just singe them and then they go straight down. So again, I'm using thread here that this works with. So very, very carefully. And you shouldn't do it for too long or else it'll turn black and it's a whole thing and the whole thing will light on fire. And when you do that, they just shrink down and now you don't see them at all. And it looks nice and clean on the back and nice and pretty on the front. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna trim down my zipper tape because it is too long and I don't need it that long. I don't want my zipper tape to come into the seam. So I'm gonna trim down my zipper tape so that it is shorter than my lining. So it tucks in just like that. Those on both sides. Okay, so now everything should be nice and flat. If you need to readjust, readjust. Make sure everything is good. And now we're going to fold this in half, lining sides together just like that, and we're gonna use some glue to help keep it in place really nicely. So I'm just gonna add glue from the middle all the way around one side down to the bottom middle on the other side. And not right on the edge, but close to it. I definitely wanna get the glue on both the lining and the vinyl. Okay, so once you have that glued, fold your whole unit in half, lining sides together. And I like to line up these little angled edges first. And if it's not a perfect lineup, if you have, you know, kind of like a bulk here, don't worry about it. We're gonna, we're gonna trim this down and clean it up in a little bit. So right now we're just trying to get it folded and stuck together. So we glue it and then we add clips to help hold it in place. And by clipping it, it's just gonna help that glue dry and really keep everything together. Now we are going to stitch this also, but not until a later step. So we wanna make this as easy as possible for that later step. There we go. So now set this to the side and let that dry. Okay, so now we're gonna work on this card slot pocket. Before we do that, let's install the mail end of the snap that goes just below these card slot slits. So for that, I'm going to need both of the pieces for the mail part of the snap and then also the dies. And so you're gonna take the longer part of the snap and that's gonna go on the back and you're gonna push that through your snap hole and then you're gonna take the shorter stubby one and you're gonna lay it right on top. Now it's not gonna snap in place, it will fall off, so you kinda have to hold it with your hand and then put it in your press. So there's like a pokey part to the die. That goes on the bottom and you're just going to put the wrong side over that and then line it up and push it down. And there we go, that's all ready to go. Okay, so now we can do the credit card slots. So flip this wrong side up, grab your double-sided tape and you're gonna cut little two inch strips and you're gonna put one strip underneath each of your credit card slots. So you're gonna have six all together over the credit card slots. Just one at a time right along the bottom edge of those slits. Try not to get it in the little circles that you made. You don't want this to show, here we go. All right, once you have those taped on, then you're gonna add another piece of tape on the top and a piece of tape on the bottom. They're both gonna be two inches long and they're both gonna be a half of an inch away from the edge. So half of an inch from the top, half of an inch from the bottom. Try to keep them centered with your line here. So don't, don't put it over here. It's not gonna do you any good over here. It's gonna be right here, centered on this line. Okay, now the fun part. So on your bottom strip right here, not all the way down here, but right below your bottom slit, remove the paper. Take your long strip and you're going to lay it right side down so that the strip is going up over the top of the card slot. So just like this, right side down, line it right up on that tape, nice and straight. There we go. So if you pull it, it should go just like that. I know it's a little tricky to keep it straight. Do your best. Okay, and just make sure it's completely covering the slit, so the dots and everything. There we go. And now we're gonna flip this over and we're going to top stitch, keeping everything nice and straight. We're gonna to top stitch right below that bottom card slot. So just right below the slit at an eighth of an inch seam allowance away from your cut. And again, leave your tails at the beginning and the end. Don't back stitch here. Leave your tails and we're just gonna tie them off like we did with the other pocket. So I'm going from circle to circle. I'm not going underneath these little dots. I'm just going from the beginning of them all the way to the next one, just underneath the straight line. All right, I know there's a lot to carry around right here, but we can do it. Okay, so you see how again we have these tails here? We're gonna flip this over so we're looking at the back. And once again, I'm just gonna pull on that bobbin thread just very gently, just so I can pull up this tiny little loop of top thread. And then I'll use my stiletto and pull that through the thread and pull it all the way through like that. I'm gonna do this for both sides. And I know that this takes a little bit more time than top stitching, but I'm telling you, it looks so much better. I'm not that particular about everything being perfect, but even I do this because it does look so good. 
All right, and then just like before, we're going to tie off each one of these ends. I'm just gonna give it two or three little knots, make sure they're nice and tight against the fabric. And then we'll just trim down these long tails and grab your lighter. And you can just burn those tails down very, very carefully. See, they, they can catch on fire. So. This just seals that knot in place and it makes it very unlikely that it will come out. All right, once we have that top stitched in place, that looks great. Now we're gonna flip this back up so the card slots are on the top, the little snap is on the bottom. And now we're gonna fold the whole unit down, just like this, nice and straight. And you're going to connect it to this bottom piece of tape. So remove the paper from the bottom tape here all the way on the bottom of your exterior panel and pull this, not super tight, doesn't have to be crazy tight, but make sure it's nice and taut and it's straight. That's the big thing here. Don't, you know, have it all crooked. So do your best to rearrange it so that it's straight with the card slot pockets. There we go. So this should be what it looks like. We have the right side of the lining here and then we have the wrong side of the exterior. So now we're gonna move on to the second to the bottom card slot and we're gonna pull the paper off of that one. And then making sure this lining stays on the tape down here, we're then going to pull this up. Again, keep it all very straight. So the bottom is staying taped down here. Push this up nice and straight, flatten it out, and then finger press along that exposed piece of tape that you just pulled the paper off of. So that's gonna be on the second pocket. So right here I can feel the fold over from the first pocket, and then here's the tape for the second pocket. And so this would be what it looks like. Now we're gonna flip this over, and now we're going to top stitch along the bottom edge of the second slit, just like we did on the bottom slit right here. All right, once that's top stitched, just like before, I left my tails and I'm gonna pull the top thread to the back. And I'm gonna do this on both sides. And then I'm going to knot each side and then just cut those tails and burn them if you feel the need to, just carefully, carefully. Okay, so here is where we're at now. So I can see from my top stitching that I'm starting to kind of veer to the right a little bit here. So I need to make sure I kind of veer it back over to the left as I move on. Okay, so now with this wrong side up just like this, we're gonna measure a half of an inch up from the bottom fold right here of our lining. So not from here. We're gonna measure a half of an inch up from the bottom edge of our lining. And we're gonna put down a piece of tape there. Here we go. So now, just like before, we're gonna take our lining strip and we're gonna fold it down to keep it nice and straight. You can remove the paper from that double-sided tape that you just put down, keeping everything nice and straight. Just tape this down. So now we have the right side of our fabric up, the wrong side of our exterior, there we go. So like I said, I need to start kind of veering it back to the left a little bit because I'm kind of starting to get crooked. So just pay attention to this as you go. It's hard to keep it perfectly straight, but you do need to try because it needs to cover everything. So now with that bottom edge taped down, I'm gonna pull the whole unit up and I'm just gonna drape it over, making sure it's straight. But again, I'm veering to the left just slightly and then I'm gonna push it down over that third piece of tape that I removed the backing from. See, so this is what I have now. And now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch underneath this third slit. And like I did previously, I will pull that top thread to the back, tie it off and burn it. All right, once we have that, once again, we're going to add a piece of double-sided tape, half of an inch from the top bottom edge. So we have the first little fold down here and then we have the second fold that we just made. So now we're measuring a half of an inch up from the most recent fold. And I'm just going to continue repeating this process until I get to the top pocket. So once again, I'm just going to remove the paper from the tape and then fold down my pocket nice and straight. Push down on that tape. I'm going to remove the tape from the fourth pocket. Fold it up, again, veering to the left or the right if you need to make sure you're covering everything up. There we go. This is the back, so it doesn't matter how it looks back here. You wanna make sure it's functional on the front. There we go. And then just top stitching along the bottom edge of this fourth pocket. 
All right, so as you can see, I measured half of an inch up from my top fold here. So it's my third little pocket. And I'm just gonna fold the lining back over that. And then I can remove the paper from the tape for the next pocket and fold it up. Then I'm gonna top stitch under the second from the top pocket now. So I added some tape a half of an inch from the topmost fold. Once again, I'm just gonna fold this back to cover it. Now I am right below the top pocket. So I'm gonna take the tape off of that one, fold it up to cover. Okay, now I'm just gonna top stitch underneath this top slip. Okay, so I added a piece of tape again to the top most fold and I'm just gonna fold this down nice and flat. And now what you're gonna do is remove this top piece of tape here and then fold the whole unit up. Just like that. I think I made my strip too long because this is quite a bit longer than it needed to be. There we go. Now, here's the thing. It doesn't appear we ever stitch down this top pocket here. It seems like this tape is what's gonna hold the top pocket in because we will stitch around the edge at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance, but right here, it doesn't look like we add anything. So what I'm gonna do just to add a little bit of extra protection is I, I have my fabric taped down. See, so I pull on it, it's on the tape. And that tape is a half of an inch from the, this is the top of my wallet. I'm gonna add just a small bit of glue and like more heavy duty glue, just right along that edge. And then I'm gonna fold this down over that glue. So that way I have tape and glue holding this down. And now I do want to trim this down so that it's not at the same spot as my exterior because I don't want this hot pink to show in the end, right? I, I, when I edge coat, I don't want to have to worry about this fabric here. So I am going to trim this down so that it is shorter than my exterior, but it is still glued and taped down. So that should help. Okay, now you can press this with an iron to get it nice and flat. Mine is actually already nice and flat. This is what the front looks like. Every single slit has a stitch underneath it. Good, good, good. You should have one, two, three, four, five, six little spots here. Now we're gonna fold this in half, wrong sides together, and glue and clip, just like we did with the zipper pocket. So starting about in the middle, I'm just gonna run a strip of glue around the edge here. And then I'm just gonna fold these wrong sides together in half. And again, I like to match up those corners first and clip them and then I'll clip along the entire edge here Ooh. all right and then once you have the edges clipped just push the whole thing nice and flat so that you can get that folded edge nice and straight and flat and then I'm going to add clips along that folded edge as well all right once this is mostly dry what we're going to do now is we're going to top stitch along the folded edge of our card slot pocket at an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to hold down this folded edge. And then we're gonna put everything together. Okay, so for the ends of this top stitching, I am once again just going to tie off these threads, but I kind of have them wrapped around over to the raw edges. And I'm just gonna tie them nice and tight there because I will be edge coating over this anyways. So it's okay if I've got that little knot there. I just have to make sure I don't sand it down on accident, which I won't. Okay, so let's start putting this all together. I'm gonna snap my little strap tab right in place and I'm gonna kind of clip it to keep it straight just so, just to make it a little bit easier. So now you're gonna take your zipper pocket and you're going to lay it with the tab side down. So the zipper should be on the left. There, there you go. The fold of the zipper should be on the left. The raw edges should be on the right. And then you're gonna take your card slot pocket and with the card slots facing up, you're gonna lay that on top. So this way those little notched edges should all line up. So you're gonna have to remove your clips if you still have them so that you can get this all squared away. So I, I just reclip them right away because I'm, I'm never quite sure if my glue worked as well as I wanted it to. So we have a lot of layers here and we just wanna keep everything nice and straight. There we go. So I'm just gonna clip this whole thing together. Okay, so I know it's a lot of clips, but this is where we're at. We see we have like a little slip pocket here. We have the card slots, the zipper on the side. Everything's lined up for the most part. It doesn't have to be perfect. We will clean it up. Okay, now let's deal with the snap 
closure. So you're going to just unclip a little bit and you want to open up the back zipper pocket so that you see that lining on the back zipper pocket. And we're just going to tuck in this edge in between those two exterior panels, just like that. So it doesn't have to be the tightest you can make it, but it needs to be tucked in there pretty well. There we go. So I'm gonna reclip this. Okay, so now this is the only kind of tricky part because you wanna keep everything straight. So make sure you look at it and your snap tab is nice and straight. And so I'm kind of tucking one of my clips underneath the fold on the top of the snap tab and I'm gonna lift it up carefully. So I'm holding it in place. So see here, we wanna make sure we keep this snap tab nice and straight when we're sewing this all together. So now we're gonna take this to the machine and starting at one corner, we're gonna top stitch along the entire edge at an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, whichever one you're more comfortable with. We're gonna go all the way around making sure we catch the snap tab and the snap tab is up, so straight up. I know it looks a little crooked, but I think it's, I think it's okay. So after you do that, you're pretty much done. Isn't that funny? All we did was top stitch. We never did any like construction stitches. We only did top stitching. So now we just want to clean it up a little bit. So I wouldn't mess too much with this edge here where your snap tab is. So you see when we push it down, that's what it looks like. Isn't that adorable? I love this so much. Okay, but over here, I got some wonky, wonky edges here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a ruler and I'm just gonna line it up on the edge here, making sure I don't cut into my top stitching. And I'll use a rotary cutter to just shave this down so it's all one nice clean edge. Okay, so you can do that for all the edges that are giving you trouble. I really just had that one over there. So now you can definitely be done at this stuff. You don't have to add edge coat. You can just leave these raw edges. I mean, anybody in my life would love this, just like this. But let's try to make it a little bit more professional and add some edge coat to this. So like I said, I'm using this Giardini stuff. So this has a base. So I'm gonna apply the base first and we wanna apply it to all raw edges. So it's gonna be the raw edges of our wallet and also the raw edges of our snap tab closure here. It gets a little messy, so definitely Take your time, don't rush through this. So I'm just going to layer this along the edge. Oh dear, already made a mess. And you can still go along the edge here where the enclosure is. You just gotta pull that snap tab back. Get a little creative, there you go. And I know that this step does add quite a bit more time to the process of making this, but it, it's pretty relaxing, honestly. And to be completely honest, I would rather spend time edge coating than making a crossbody strap. I just, I don't wanna make any more crossbody straps right now. So I am not minding the edge coat at all. Okay, so I've got the edges of that done. Now I'm gonna do the edges of the snap enclosure. All right, so once I have that base coat applied, I'm just gonna let this dry. And then I'm just gonna do one layer of the color for now so I can show you, but over the rest of today, I will add about three layers total of this. I just have to let each one dry in between. Okay, so once the base is dry, now we can paint it with the colors. Now again, you can get a set of a bunch of different colors from Giardini, which is what I did. And I've actually used a few of them, so I like having them. It's better than just having the brown and black, but, but, but today I am just using the black. So just like I did with the base coat, I'm gonna start, I think I'm gonna start with the exterior edges and I'm just gonna go over this. Now, I actually meant to sand this down a little bit. <laughs> you can get like some 400 or higher sandpaper and sand down these edges after you apply the base coat before you apply the color and that'll give it a really nice smooth finish. See, this is where I get kind of sloppy. See how I got I got it on the tab right there? So I gotta, I gotta clean that up. 
I'll clean that up in just a moment. So you don't, you want to, you want to take your time with this. Obviously I'm being a little sloppy. Ideally you're using a color that's similar to the vinyl or the leather that you're working with. So if you do make a little bit of a mistake, you don't notice it so much. That one on my tab is very noticeable though. So I will have to clean that up. But do you see how already it looks so much better? Isn't that cool? It starts to just look like one piece of vinyl and it, it you know when people look at it it's like how did you do that did you like have a really thick piece of vinyl and you cut slits into it and then made pockets how did you do it it's magic of sewing you know magic of sewing so again i'm just holding that tab back i think what i'm going to actually do is let this exterior paint dry and then i'll do the snap tab because it gets a little difficult you know, keeping everything neat. Okay, and I can already see it's kind of rough here because I didn't sand it down. So definitely, definitely take that time to sand down. After this coat dries, this black coat dries, I will sand it down a little bit to make it nice and smooth. So now I am just going to set this down and I'm going to get a Q-tip to clean up that mess. All right, I wonder if I can paint this without moving it. <laughs> So I don't want too much paint on here. I'm just gonna lift up this snap tab. Let's see if I can do this. All right, I was able to get all of the edges coated. One thing to be careful of when you're doing this, if you get some of your paint on your work surface or anything like that, that's fine. Um, just make sure it's a work surface you don't mind getting paint on, but don't move your material back over it. So for example, I don't want to move this over this wet paint here because then it's going to get on my vinyl and that's going to be very difficult to clean. So if that happens, just make sure when you move your material, you move it further away from where the paint is. You understand, you don't want to get paint on there. All right, so now I'm just going to let this dry and then I'm going to be done for today. All right, what do you think? Look how stinking cute it is. It's so darling. I love this vinyl, obviously. You guys know I love this vinyl. But look how sweet this is with our six little card slot pockets and then a nice little slip pocket right here, a zipper pocket up top. I love that we have like this little pop of pink everywhere. I think that's so cute. I love the edge coat. Mine, it's a little rough. I do need to go over the edge coat with um, some sandpaper and then I'm gonna do another two layers I think of the paint but wow this is so much fun so I love 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 these quick sews especially like I said especially during summer especially during this summer where we all kind of feel like we have a summer we have to make up for doesn't it feel like we kind of lost our summer last year so we want to we want to do it big this summer so we want to travel a lot we want to go to all the barbecues all the picnics all the all the you know outings everything and so we still want to craft, at least I do, I still want to craft and I still want to make things. I just don't want to spend, you know, a week working on one bag. Whereas during the fall and winter, I probably feel more comfortable doing that. So little projects like this are amazing. They bust through our scraps, which we all probably have a ton of right now after all the things we've been sewing over the last year. So we can use our scraps, we can give these as gifts, we can use them all the time, you can sell them. I mean, they just, they're just so, so cute. So thank you again to Linz for allowing me to use your pattern in today's tutorial. I love these so much. Everybody loves these so much. I'm gonna go make a whole bunch more. I really do think I will. I'll probably make a bunch of these. I wanna try to incorporate some other things with it too. I think I wanna put some like vinyl on them with some names, maybe some embroidery. Some embroidery on this would be darling, wouldn't it? I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.